guys, it's Laura and you're watching Laura X Annie. So today I'm here with my Fifty Shades Darker review. Ooh, so happy Valentine's Day by the way. <clears throat> I am still single on Valentine's Day. I'm actually filming this before Valentine's Day. God, I look like a poodle. Um, but I did get a little thing for Valentine's Day. I got roses for Valentine's Day. I got these from my mum. She came up today, I'm filming this on Sunday. So she came up today and with my dad and she gave me roses. And if you didn't know, roses are my favourite flower. But what did you guys get for Valentine's Day? Let me know in the comments down below. So, I went to go see Fifty Shades of Grey on Friday the 10th of February, which was the day it came out. So first off, I want to talk about the soundtrack. The soundtrack is on point. I feel the great thing with the Fifty Shades of Grey, the first movie, was that the soundtrack, all the songs that were on the soundtrack, or all the songs I really liked, were actually in the movie incorporated in some way, whether they were like on the radio in the background or they're somehow they managed to incorporate it. This time they really did incorporate them into every aspect of the movie, which was brilliant. Also, I was very nearly late for the film. I was actually, I was about five, seven minutes late for the film, which is the first time that's ever happened. But mind you, there's like half an hour of adverts before the film anyway, so I was five or seven minutes late. There was a creepy guy sitting next to me. I went by myself as per, as per usual. Does that not just show you the essence of how single I am? That I went to go see Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades Darker, sorry, by myself. But there was a creepy guy sitting next to me and he also started snoring later on in the film. And I was like, are you fucking joking me? But let's get right into the film. So right at the start of the film, we see Christian's Nightmare, which is at the start of the book, right at the start. I actually have the book there, just in the corner. You think you can see it? Yeah? Can you? Roughly? Yeah, well, it's over there. So I have had all three books since 2012, and I've read them about five times over the past five years. And um, Fifty Shades Darker and Fifty Shades Freed are definitely my favourite two bits of the... Um, my favourite two books anyway and um, at the, right at the start just before it goes into Anna's point of view um, Christian talks about his nightmare basically and I didn't think they would incorporate that into the film but they did. The intro was very interesting I was like I don't know I think that's what hooked me in was after Christian's nightmare we got an interesting intro with the white roses and it just didn't seem like what you would expect from Fifty Shades and what you would expect from their intro it was really really good. Um, Christian looks far more rugged and I think he suits it a bit more because in the first film it didn't really look like Jamie Dornan and he just looked, I think Christian looked too young in the first film whereas in this film he looked his age, he looked 27 and he looked his age and I think it just really suited it a lot better and plus Jamie Dornan suits a bit of scruff so it just worked 10 times better. I loved Anna's line where she goes, I'm only going out with you because I'm hungry and I was like literally me. Literally me, literally me. That was me to a T. I was like, yeah, totally me. Uh, ah, the testosterone is strong in this one. In the scene where um, Christian meets Jack Hyde for the first time, there's so much testosterone in that bar that I'm just sitting there. I'm literally Anna when Jack calls Christian Chris, what are you having, Chris? And it's just Anna just goes, that's literally me. Um, I prefer their relationship in this film to the first film because it's a lot more developed and a lot more less BDSM which I really liked because it was a le lot less abusive as it could have been said in the first film. I wrote a big review about the first film which I then took down because uh, some people just did not like it and um, i.e. there was one girl that just didn't like it and I was like <laughs> Sorry, sorry not sorry that I like this film, I like these series, I like these books. Sorry not sorry because I just because I like something doesn't mean that I uh, support it. Does that make sense? I just really like the idea of the books. Anyway, uh, um, not like so that's what I mean like the relationship is more realistic in this film than it is in the other one not that it's actually realistic in the first place but it's just more realistic than the first film if you catch my drift much better director this time he I love Sam Taylor Johnston but uh Johnston Taylor fuck her name is I just do prefer this director a lot more I think he was able to explain it a lot more and I don't usually say that about a guy's director but I don't know why I feel like it was more 
I don't know, more edgy. Right, so question. Were Christian's cigarette burns on him in the first film? Was any eagle-eyed viewer able to see them? Because I don't remember if they were, but they were present in this film. I do love a good convo about virginity, but I must admit I'm with Anna on this one because she was like, oh, I was waiting for the right guy, I was reading Austin and no one ever lived up to that expectation until you came along and I was like, that is literally me and I will stand by that. That's probably one of the biggest bits of the film that I completely stand by and completely agree is Anna saying that she has such high expectations that she was waiting for the right guy and then suddenly she found Christian. Not that I would agree that Christian's the right guy for me, but maybe he's the right guy for her. But for me, it's like, I'm still waiting for that right guy to come along and I will wait till the ends of the earth for that right guy. I'm not going to throw it away and I think that's an important thing that in a film like that that might be understated I think it's an important thing to realise. Leila, i.e. Bella Heathcote, who I didn't know was in Dark Shadows, was just um, out of focus in certain shots and I really really liked that because I thought it was really pleasing on the eyes that the fact that she's sort of outside of the shots and yeah. I want Anna's closet, everyone wants Anna's closet. The beads scene is hilarious which is the, me if you know the book she'll know the beads. Um, of all the scenes for Nick Jonas, who is the love of my life's music to come on, i.e. Bum Biddy Bum, which is one of the best songs I've ever heard in my life, of all the scenes for it to come on, it's my favourite scene out of the book, which is um, when they have the sex scene at the ball. Of all the scenes, of all the scenes, I was so happy when that happened. Jack's a fucking dick. You know that from the books. He's much different. I think he really, I don't know. I like what Anna's wearing to inspect the playroom in this film. It's very similar to what she was wearing in the first film when her and Christian went in to play for the first time. Not when she went in and saw the Red Room for the first time, but as in the first time that they went in and actually played. She was wearing a kind of dress in black flats. She was wearing very, something very similar in this one and I thought, I don't know if that was deliberate, but it was very, very kind of... Like I was like, kudos to them if it was deliberate, but I, point, I clicked on to that. Once again, Jack is a right bag full of dicks. Uh, I cry every time when Christian subs for Anna. I wish there was more to that scene though because there's more in the books to that scene and I really really wish there was more to that scene. That's the only thing I think about the film is very jumpy like as if it gave you the the gist of the scene that you wanted but it wasn't long enough for me. I was like mate come on just give it a bit longer. The marry me. Ah marry me. Oh I'm so happy. <laughs> I want to marry you. Why? The way she said it, the way Anna went, why, was legit me. I'm like, if anyone says, oh, I really like you, you're really attractive. What, why? Why do you like me? I don't like myself, why do you like me? Oh my God, yeah, that's literally me. Um, my boathouse scene, but why no sex? Right, there is a boathouse scene where there is sex in it. I don't know if it's the first book or it's the second book, but either way, I never got my scene with the sex because it was a really good boat. It's a really good sex scene, but it's not in the movies. It's not in the first movie. It's not in the second movie. I'm like, really, come on. And finally, Jack at the end makes me so excited for next year and for the next film. So all in all, I would rate the film about six out of ten. I really, really enjoy. Actually, let's give it. Let's give it an eight. I actually really enjoyed it. So 8 out of 10, I would really, really, really like the film if you guys are into that sort of thing and are of age, go see the film. It is worth it. It's a really, really good film. And do you know what? There is so, there's more sex, but less BDSM, which I think, I think it, it's hard to make a sequel. It's hard to do that with a new director. And I think it's really good. And I like how they filmed both uh, the first, the, the freed and darker. Darker and freed? Yeah, because that's how the, it goes. Yeah, I like how they filmed both films so we get the film next year. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and a little special Valentine's Day video for you. And by the way, my lipstick is actually the Rita Ora. <sighs> Let's not get into that. Uh, Fifty Shades Darker lipstick that she has for Rimmel. So you can get that super dog by the way, just go get it because it's really nice. And it's a really nice consistent and yeah I will see you guys again on Thursday for a video a little slight update in my life due to the fact that I'm now acting again 
So I'll see you on Thursday for that. See you then. Bye.